So we're about to do something that we haven't done yet on the sailboat. We got this. <laughs> it, it went, we could have been a little bit more prepared. Let's go. That's the cool way to do it. <laughs> we're gonna see what we can find. Welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. flies because there are lots of flies here <laughs> and enjoying the beautiful coastline of Turkey so check this out dock lines out, uh, stern two lines, because we are going to be doing something we haven't done in a very long time, and we certainly haven't done it on the sailboat yet. We did it when we had our uh, chaparral on a lake, but um, not yet out here in uh, the sea. So we're going to be taking our big long lines uh, to shore. We'll put the anchor out in the bay, we'll back up, we'll set that anchor, we'll take the lines to shore, and so we'll actually be tied off to the shore and have our forward point uh, anchor in the front. So this is going to be a first on the sailboat. We'll see how that goes. So we just try to find a big boulder to tie off of on, uh, tie our lines off of. So it'll be interesting. So as we approach the anchorage, uh, there are definitely several boats in the anchorage. So the first thing we need to do is pick our spots. Then once we're ready for that, I will go up forward and prep the anchor. We'll get into line and do set the anchor just like we normally would. So I wait for Cass's command. He says, go ahead and drop. We'll drop, we pay out the amount that we uh, determine is appropriate based on the depth that we have so that we have the correct scope. And then once we have set that, we will come back and set and pay out the uh, shorelines which Cass will take to shore in our dinghy. So these are the shorelines. They're pre-set up. So all he's going to do is grab them, put them in the dinghy one at a time, zip to the line or the shore, tie it off, come back, grab the next line, go back, tie it to the shore. Then we'll tighten up the anchor, we'll tighten up the lines so that we're tight between them. And then we'll be set. <laughs> Easy peasy, right? We got this. <laughs> We could have been a little bit more prepared. And now we have a lot of lessons that we've learned. So we had actually grabbed the wrong line, so we needed a little bit longer line, so making sure we have the right line that we're pulling out of the locker to take them ashore because we got there and it was too short, and so we had to do a dance and go back and forth. Well, then we got blown off a little bit. And uh, thankfully, the guy next to us actually came over. He was really quite nice and helped Mike. us out. Mike came over and helped us out. It was really cool. Um, and then we just started tying lines on and, and extending it out. Uh, now here's the reality of what it looked like in real time. And 
so now we've actually uh, got the right lines tied and, and adjusted back to so that we're using the correct ones. Anyway, we're going to go in shore and uh, back ashore, just check the tie off. And what we're looking for is making sure that it's still tied up under the water because Cass tied it under the water specifically for two reasons. One, rats, and two is cockroaches because if the lines are above the water line, uh, you'll have cockroaches and rats that will just... And mice. Do, 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 do. And mice, any rodents, any nasties that we don't want on the boat. Let's just be real about that. <laughs> and they just do, 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 across the line. So we try very hard to keep them out and off the boat. So come check it out with us. Let's go. You're getting cold. <laughs> That's the cold way to do it. I like the plunge better. Yeah. Maybe the best part about the salt water? You float. You float. <laughs> Oh, digging in. Dig in, girl. Come on. Welcome back, my love. <laughs> You're a vision of grace, my love. to go check out the ruins on the beach here but um, they're close to the public right now due to their active excavation so we talked to a gentleman who actually runs a mobile restaurant literally out of a like a camper van and he told us to go across the bay and there's some that we can go check out so okay. we're gonna see what we can find see we see Tisubuku is a small bay surrounded by hills in the Mazi area, 20 kilometers east of Badrum in the Mughla province. Tisubuku Bay was the crossroads between the two important ancient cities and ports of Halicarnassus and the Seramos in Korean coast. The bay now called Tisubuku, it was the ancient city of Anastasiopolis in the late antiquity area when the city was founded at the beginning of the 5th century AD. Like many other coastal cities, it was abandoned with the onset of the Arab raids in the 7th century AD. The site of the first settlement is an acropolis, which is 200 meters from the coastal to the north of the bay, 
surrounded by internal and external walls built on a hill overlooking the entire bay, offering an archaeological findings dating back to the Roman period. All the buildings parallel to the coast belong to the early Christian period, also called Late Antiquity. The city is a port settlement designed to fit the half-moon-shaped physical structure of the bay. In addition to the harbor structures of the bay, there are many ruins of structures where we have not yet been able to determine their functions, which continue towards the slopes in the north with the church and grave structures. There are important religious buildings of the city, which are aligned parallel to the coastal along the coast to the west of the port. These are a baptistry, a chapel adjacent to the church, a chapel and a bath. As a personal side note, one of my favorite things is walking through these old excavations, trying to imagine what the creators had in mind. What did the buildings look like? Am I on a street, an alley, inside of a building? What did the buildings look like? What were they used for? I let my imagination wander as we walk through the area. Definitely one of the best things. There are two-story public buildings, baths, streets, dwellings, tower, and cisterns in the south of the bay. Surrounded by mountains and land, the bay is quite difficult to reach, and some roads and tracks used today bear signs of being used in a long existing settlement from ancient times until today. The cistern, residence, and grave belonging to the Republican era add the traces of the Turkish period to the site. As well as its ruins, the large bay and coastline of Kisabuku has made it one of the most frequently visited bays for most boats involved in sea tourism. One. It's definitely worth it. On the other side, so there's, this is a really big bay. On one side of the bay is this area that is not gated and they have finished their excavation, I think, maybe, I don't know. But they, they have not blocked this side off. So you can walk through this side. On the other side, they are doing active excavation. And so they've just blocked it off and there's no entry, so. If we look like we're dancing, there's just lots of flies out today. And they're there's, biters. There's the biters. Oh, so they're so like, bad. Them off. I know. Dang <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, we're out of here. <laughs> All right, here we are on the dinghy. Shelly's about to dive in. When we were snorkeling this whole little uh, coastline this morning, we saw a lionfish. Yeah. And uh, we didn't have a GoPro with us. We know sometimes we just dive without it. So now we're back in the dinghy, and Shelly's going to dive down and shoot some video for you guys. Yes. Hopefully, uh, he's still here. I think we marked him pretty well. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll check it out. Let's see what we can see. Yeah, buddy. Here we go. Hang on your goggles. Hang on your goggles. <laughs> okay, blue up. All right, looks like she's tagged him. She's prepping, getting her breath set, getting ready to dive. still there yep. getting creative up in here transferring from the big big bottles to the little bottles so I can transfer it into a portable 
<laughs> option for our drinking water because uh, that is quite large to try and drink out of. <laughs> I need another one. So these little small bottles fit really well in my fridge and under my floor. So we're filling up the larger ones because then I can transfer it. But while we're at it, we're just going to fill up the smaller ones. It's a process. <laughs> But I try and fill up and have extra water bottles in my fridge because it fills up the space in the fridge to help everything stay cooler overnight when I shut it down overnight. So uh, because our battery bank is what it is, we do have to shut our fridge down every night. And um, so yeah, it works out. We have one more big bottle that Cass is holding that we'll start to use and fill up out of. But yeah, those are the big bottles we get in Turkey. So it's awesome. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our video, like and subscribe. And don't forget to join us next week.